Okay, so I'll look through some of my stuff to see what I might want to put on the little uh, treat coffin box. And excuse the ink or whatever that is. I think it's stressing on my fingers. Anyway, I last year used a K&Company Company die cut cardstock Halloween pack. It comes with 90 pieces and I used nearly all of it up. I love these little pieces as you see here on the table. So I had to buy another one. I believe I got it at Michael's. So there's 90 pieces in this. This will last you quite a while. You get lots of little things. I have pulled out the spiders, some bats, the creepy, the eek spider. I'll probably just use one or two of these like that and lay them all out. Then I cut me a piece of green. I was out of black, so I cut me a piece of green tulle. It's about 20 inches long. And then I also cut up from scrap paper. This does not go with this collection of paper, but I like the green in it. Uh, and cut it so that it will fit here on top of this, um, the lid. So first I'm gonna start with the inside. And all I'm going to do is add some spider web. Uh, this little die cut piece that's a spider web. I'm gonna ink the edges. As always, I just like to give it a, a little finishing detail. And I think I'm going to cut this little tab piece off here of the, the word eek. So I'm going to just round that up and then ink it. And this is going to be glued down flat into the bottom of the coffin because I want to leave it so that I can put candy in it. And I think I'm going to have to make a trip to the grocery store and get me some miniature Halloween candies. So I'm going to put that in there so that when it's empty, and then this one has the spider and it's shiny. The eek is shiny, so I'm going to use, see it's the same on the back. I'm just going to use this side with the little spider. And I'm just going to kind of offset it with this other web inside there. And I'm going to again keep them flat so that you can add little miniature candies or candy corn or whatever you want to inside the treat box. So I'm going to do it that way. Like that. It's cute like that. I'll just, when you open it up, if there's nothing in it, it just says eek. <laughs> and then for the lid, <clears throat> first I'm going to work with this piece. I did ink, ink the edges. Let me add a little bit more. I want a little, a little darker here. And for the tool piece, I just uh, take a piece of tape to make it stay on the back and tape it down so that I can go ahead and glue this piece on. So I'm going to add some glue. Place it on the top of the lid, kind of about halfway, the lower half here. And press it down so it glues. And because of the raised part of the tool, you're going to need to hold it until the glue hole catches. Just like that. And what I'm going to do is bring this up. And probably pull it into like a just a simple knot rather than a bow and I think I want it kind of on the side here so I'm going to tie a knot and I cut it to 20 inches initially to make sure I need to add some glue on the bottom here. I may have to use score tape something that will also hold it down but I think if I put enough glue and I hold it with my fingers it will dry so I'm going to hold that and we'll just give it a few seconds to dry. While the paper piece was drying, I went ahead and laid out some of my little elements that I want to use. So I kind of like the way it looks this way. So I'm going to take them all off. Now before I start gluing them on, I'm taking this and I'm going to go ahead and trim this off to more like a bow length side. Right there. And then I'm going to add 
some of the Halloween twine that I have for a little tag later. So let's, first let's start gluing that. What's really great about these little die cuts is they're two-sided. So it's okay if they stick off the edge because they have something on the back, same thing on the back. So that makes it really, really cute. So I'm gonna be careful and not put glue on this part over here where my fingers are at. So I'm gonna go ahead and get glue on the tombstone and the grass and half of the skeleton, I think. So we're going to stick him down right about here, okay? And then the ghost, and I did ink all the edges of all these. So my ghost, I think, let's see, kind of like him tucked in there. So I'm going to glue him, except maybe this little bit on the side, we don't... I won't glue, glue on where, what's going to be maybe sticking out. So we'll just slip him in there. And all of him glued down, so that's okay. Like that. And then I want a black foam square. I think for the bat. One should do. Maybe, maybe, let's see, put one on this wing here. And then possibly one real tight there in on his body. You may have to trim just a little bit off. Don't want that sticking out. Okay. That's because I want him popping up just, just a little bit. There, I need some ink right there on his little wing. that off. And then let's see, did I leave enough room for creepy? And I don't want this attached all the way down. I do have kind of got crimped there where the R and the E connect, so I'm going to put a little bit of glue there to hopefully reinforce that to make it a little stiffer and let that dry some. Spread that out and turn that upside down, let it dry. And my little spiders, I think I want this guy down here. Oh, I like the shiny side too. Yeah, we'll do that side. We'll put some glue on him. Whoops. I don't want any on that big. Mr. Kim right there. body and his legs that'll be on the main part here. Stick that in there. Turn him this away. Okay, now I'm going to stop this while this is drying and go get my twine. For this one I went with some black and white twine, twine black and white twine from the, the doodle bug pack that I have. And I fold it in half and then just this little hole on this tag is real little, so fold it in half real tight and pull that loop through like that. Open up the loop and put both tails through and then pull. So that gives you a nice, neat little knot there on the tag. And then I want to put it through underneath the knot of the uh, tool. Pull it up to where I want that. And then I think I'm gonna tie a bow. Let's see what it looks like with the bow tied. Tie first a loop knot. And then a bow. Pull it tight. And adjust your loops 
if you want to, depending on what size loops you want. A little bit more on this side. Pull them down smaller and then I tighten it again. So yeah, I think I like that. I think I'm going to tie a knot on each end, try to do them in almost the same spot. About there. This one's a little shorter, so. And then just trim off this end. And then, because you have a knot there, then you can untwist this a little bit. Kind of give it a little braid look there on the end. Now all we need to do is add the creepy, and because it's longer than the box, I'm just going to attach part of it, so I'm kind of let it stick up. So for sure, the tops of the C and the inside part of the Y. So this part here just the tops of the C, top and bottom of the C. Okay, so flip that over. I'm going to put the C down first in here and then bring the Y and make sure it kind of, we don't want the ghost eyes to be covered up so drop it down just a little bit there and then the creepy part sticks up. I mean the R and the two E's. Creepy. See it there? I'll have photos on, on the blog post so that you can see it a little better. And that's our little coffin treat box. And I'll get me some candy to put in it. Thank you for watching and join me again tomorrow for another one of the 13 frights before Halloween.